stand still and neither will I. So wherever and whenever I can take steps without legislation to expand opportunity for more American families, that's what I'm going to do. childhood obesity rates for the first time in 30 years. And that's an achievement that will improve lives and reduce health care costs for decades to come. The Joining Forces Alliance that Michelle and Jill Biden launched has already encouraged employers to hire or train nearly 400,000 veterans and military spouses. Taking a page from that playbook, the White House just organized a college opportunity summit where already 150 universities, businesses, nonprofits have made concrete commitments to reduce inequality and in access to higher education and to help every hardworking kid go to college and succeed when they get to campus. And across the country with mayors, governors, and state legislatures on issues from homelessness to marriage equality. The point is, there are millions of Americans outside of Washington who are tired of stale political arguments and are moving this country forward. How the son of the barkeep is Speaker of the House. President of the greatest nation on earth. Well, where we've connected businesses to research universities that can help America lead the world in advanced technologies. Tonight I'm announcing we'll launch six more this year. Bipartisan bills in both houses could double the number of these hubs and the jobs they create. So get those bills to my desk. Put more Americans back to work. Over the past five years, my administration has made more loans to small business owners than any other. And when 98% of our exporters are small businesses, new trade partnerships with Europe and Asia, the Asia Pacific will help them create even more jobs. We need to work together on tools like Bipartisan Trade Promotion Authority to protect our workers, protect our environment, and open new markets to new goods stamped made in the USA. I announced a few years ago is working, and today America is closer to energy independence than we have been in decades. Every four minutes, another American home or business goes sold. Every panel pounded into place by a worker whose job cannot be outsourced. Let's continue that progress with a smarter tax policy that stops giving $4 billion a year to fossil fuel industries that don't need it so we can invest more in fuels of the future that do. ...to work with states, utilities, and others to set new standards on the amount of carbon pollution our power plants are allowed to dump into the air. The shift, the shift to a cleaner energy economy won't happen overnight, and it will require some tough choices along the way. But the debate is settled. Climate change is a fact. And when our children's children look us in the eye and ask if we did all we could to leave them a safer, more stable world with new sources of energy, I want us to be able to say, yes, we did. <laughs> Finally, if we're serious about economic growth, it is time to heed the call of business leaders, labor leaders, faith leaders, law enforcement, and fix our broken immigration system. Republicans and Democrats in the Senate have acted, and I know that members of both parties in the House want to do the same. Independent economists say immigration reform will grow our economy and shrink our deficits by almost $1 trillion in the next two decades, and for good reason. When people come here to fulfill their dreams, to study, invent, contribute to our culture, 
They make our country a more attractive place for businesses to locate and create jobs for everybody. So let's get immigration reform done this year. Let's get it done. It's time. She knew that Ford needed parts for the best-selling truck in America, and she knew how to make those parts. She just needed the workforce. So she dialed up what we call an American Job Center, places where folks can walk in to get the help or training they need to find a new job or a better job. She was flooded with new workers. And today, Detroit Manufacturing Systems has more than 700 employees. And what Andra and her employees experienced is how it should be for every employer and every job seeker. So tonight I've asked Vice President Biden to lead an across-the-board reform of America's training programs to make sure they have one mission, train Americans with the skills employers need and match them to good jobs that need to be filled right now. Missy DeMars is a mother of two young boys. She'd been steadily employed since she was a teenager, put herself through college. She'd never collected unemployment benefits, but she'd been paying taxes. In May, she and her husband used their life savings to buy their first home. A week later, budget cuts claimed the job she loved. Last month, when their unemployment insurance was cut off, she sat down and wrote me a letter the kind I get every day. We are the face of the unemployment crisis, she wrote. I'm not dependent on the government. Our country depends on people like us who build careers, contribute to society, care about our neighbors. I'm confident that in time I will find a job, I will pay my taxes, and we will raise our children in their own home and the community we love. Please give us this chance. Congress, give these hard-working, responsible Americans that chance. Give them that chance. They need our help right now, but more important, this country needs them in the game. Mm -hmm. That's why I've been asking CEOs to give more long-term unemployed workers a fair shot at new jobs, a new chance to support their families. And in fact, this week, many will come to the White House to make that commitment real. So join us and do the same, because we are stronger when America fields a full team. <laughs> heard of English when he moved to New York City at age nine. But last month, thanks to the support of great teachers and an innovative tutoring program, he led a march of his classmates through a crowd of cheering parents and neighbors from their high school to the post office where they mailed off their college applications. And this son of a factory worker just found out he's going to college this fall. This year I asked this Congress to help states make high quality pre-K available to every four year old. And as a parent, as well as a president, I repeat that request tonight. But in the meantime, 30 states have raised pre-K funding on their own. They know we can't wait. So just as we worked with states to reform our schools, this year we'll invest in new partnerships with states and communities across the country in a race to the top for our youngest children. And as Congress decides what it's going to do, I'm going to pull together a coalition of elected officials, business leaders, and philanthropists willing to help more kids access the high-quality pre-K that they need. It is right for America. We need to get this done. ...chance this country gave us. But we know our opportunity agenda won't be complete. And too many young people entering the workforce today will see the American dream as an empty promise. Unless we also do more to make sure our economy honors the dignity of work and hard work pays off for every single American. But they still make 77 cents for every dollar of manners. That is wrong. And in 2014, it's an embarrassment. Women deserve equal pay for equal work.
sacrificing her job. A mother deserves a day off to care for a sick child or a sick parent without running into hardship. And you know what a father does too. It is time to do away with workplace policies that belong in a Mad Men episode. This year, let's all come together, Congress, the White House, businesses from Wall Street to Main Street, to give every woman the opportunity she deserves, because I believe when women succeed, America succeeds. Americans overwhelmingly agree that no one who works full-time should ever have to raise a family in poverty. So I ask this Congress to raise the minimum wage, Five states have passed laws to raise theirs. Many businesses have done it on their own. Nick Shute is here today with his boss, John Serrano. John's an owner of Punch Pizza in Minneapolis. And Nick helps make the dough. <laughs> Only now he makes more of it. John just gave his employees a raise to 10 bucks an hour and that's a decision that has eased their financial stress and boosted their morale. Tonight I ask leaders to follow John's lead. Do what you can to raise your employees' wages. It's good for every profitable corporations like Costco see higher wages as the smart way to boost productivity and reduce turnover. We should, too. In the coming weeks, I will issue an executive order requiring federal contractors to pay their federally funded employees a fair wage of at least $10.10 an hour, because if you cook our troops' meals or wash their dishes, you should not have to live in poverty. federal minimum wage is worth about 20% less than it was when Ronald Reagan first stood here.